Hey everybody, Grant Miller here, Miami Community Newspapers, or some people like me to say Grant Miller here. Yeah. We're with Misty Buck, <laughs> Miss Inc. We're gonna talk about, she's a marketer, public relations. She does everything for all types of business, large, big, small. We're gonna, today it's gonna be about Facebook and the magic of the mix. So let's get right into it. What are the let's benefits of creating a Facebook page for any company and why you're doing that you are doing what tell everybody oh i am getting on facebook live here to do a watch party so if you are connected and that with will me, and watch and you'll explain what a watch party is later so why should we party. our business our personal life our Whoa. family what's the advantage of putting the facebook page together so as a business owner and as a professional facebook is pretty much ground zero, right? For social media marketing we had back in the day was, you know, MySpace and then quickly, quickly Facebook was the one that took over. And a lot of people wonder, is Facebook still the place to be? And I think it's really the number one piece of foundational piece where you wanna be. There's a few reasons behind that. One is you can leave reviews there. It's great for SEO. So if someone is searching your company and they put in ABC, I don't know, air conditioning company, and they're, they're looking for you, Facebook is gonna be one of the first social networks that pop up in those results. So it's really nice to make sure that you have that there and that you're using it as a part of your SEO strategy, your branding and giving your customers a place to interact with you um, and, and a platform where you can take messages into the direct messages, right? You can have that individual conversation. You can have a public conversation. You can share knowledge. They can really get to know you and, and who you are as a business owner and you can show off your professionalism. That's pretty much in a nutshell. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> There's a some you know people on now are watching from their personal Facebook. Mm -hmm. What's the advantage of a business if you do go from a personal or business? I think it's harder as a business to get people to join you. Personally, you could ask people. Mm -hmm. You have a certain amount. Am I correct? Right. Right. So, so there's disadvantages and advantages to have it as a professional for right. the business world into having a personal page versus a fan page. So the fan page, just for clarification, is where you go in and you click that like button and now you're connected to the business page. The um, uh, the friend request page where you do the, that part, that's what I mean by I say a personal page. So on the personal side, it does give you um, a lot of options to connect with people directly that you don't have as a business page. It also, the algorithms work a little bit different. So what I mean by algorithms is the parts of information that Facebook decides to show you, right? So if I have a fan page, um, it's a public page, people can go there. It, again, it helps with SEO. It's a really good for your business presence. And then your individual page is where you're really showcasing who you are as an individual and as a professional. And that's probably where you're putting a little bit more of those personal touches to let people know um, who you are and, and you know how to work with you, in other words. You know, the big issue, us and anybody else, how many times should I post in a day? And, oh. how, and how does Facebook work? I mean, everybody thinks, okay, I got 2,000 friends. Right. Or I got 5,000, or I got 200. Everybody thinks, as soon as you post, everybody's gonna see it. Right. Is that true? That's not true, yeah, no, I'm not, right? it's not Everybody true. says that. It's not I'm true. gonna post my ad, yeah. and everybody's gonna see it. Right, well, some people, so they'll say, oh, I can't put that out there because now everybody's gonna see it, and um, or maybe I'll get, I've had this before, maybe I'll get too much business and I can't handle the business. I love and that, I'm, that's the best line. Uh, I'll heard get too that much one. business. Yeah, it's gonna be too much, so I can't handle it. So, you know, you really wanna just, <laughs> on that part, just slow down, but on the other side, have realistic expectations, right? So, I don't know the exact number, but I would say around 10% of your friends or your fans will probably see your post. So, if you have 200, people maybe 20 you're gonna see if you have 5,000 maybe five maybe as a starting place so let's say it's a post that people really love so it's a video or it's a photo or a really funny meme or something that people are interacting with Facebook is gonna flag that and say hey you know a lot of people really like this post let's show it to more people and so then that percentage expands based Repeat on Facebook again. thinking it's so interesting if, if I post something that's nice and funny right and I get a lot of likes Right. That's telling Facebook what? That more people want to see this. So Facebook is going to say, great, we're going to show this to more of, let's say, Grant's friends and Grant's fans. I, no, I don't have fans. Oh, oh. community newspapers. Yes, do. they do. <laughs> okay. So I post something. You want to tell people to like. Please like. Right? 
You can. Do, so you actually, sometimes if you put it that wording in, there are some schools of thought that if you say, oh, please share, please tag, please comment, that Facebook doesn't like those tactics. And they'll actually hide that from your audience. But that doesn't stop you from sending it as a direct message or a text message. And hey, can you go to my post and interact with it? You know, I, I, you know my brother is Mr. Facebook. I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm learning. I think it's like a, a slot machine. You know, you, you pull the lever and all your friends are on it. It mm -hmm. doesn't mean they're going to see it. Right. It just keeps rotating. Right. And then if you have a story that on your company and you posted it, is it okay to repost? And if, if, if so, when do you repost? Right, so that's, that's a really great question. So I love that tactic. So if there is something that's going out, for instance, on the Missing or the Community Newspapers Facebook page that um, I really may wanna make sure people see, and I'll do this for our clients as well, I'll go into my personal profile and I will share it to what do you my mean that? personal what do you mean? profile. You, in, so. in, you, you got us lost. What do you mean into your personal profile? Like? Right. So remember, the fan page is the, the page where you go in and you like right. to connect gotcha. with a business, right? And then a personal page is where you do those friend requests, right? So that's really your, that's me as Misty Buck versus Missing the Brand, which is the fan page that you go in and like. So me as Misty Buck on Facebook, where all my friends, I might share go into the missing page and share something that went out there to get more of my network to see it. And that's really actually one of the top things that we um, to ask our clients to do. And when I'm teaching workshops on social media, telling people, make sure that you ask your network, people who are work with you, or maybe they're on your board of directors to go in and share those posts as a regular practice, because that just helps it expand to even a wider network. The South Dade Chamber of Commerce that Carrie Black runs she every time she comes on mm -hmm. every board member it's not an option uh -huh. every board member shares it that's so then amazing. everybody on their facebook sees it right. it's a win-win for everybody that's an amazing if you have buy-in like that a way to go because that's really the right way to do things just keep sh get everybody to yes. share the message yes exactly okay how often should i spend money on ads and what are ads all right so on facebook ads you have there's a, there's used to be very simple. Now there's a bunch of different options. I tr typically um, put them into two different options. So you have boost posts. So let's say I'm posting something as missing, like, hey, check me out on community, community newspapers and I want more people to see it. What I might do is boost that. So I'll pay Facebook to show that post to more people. Not right? reach, view. To view, well, reach, view, impressions, that's a whole different yeah, Everybody gets thing. confused. You look and you think, you go, oh, I, I reached 10,000 people, view. Right. Not reached, right. but only 500 viewed and 300 engaged. What's all those words? So Right, so you technically have reach and impressions, and then you get into engagement and all those other things. But reach is how many people um, your post got in front of. Impressions is the total amount of times that your post was probably seen. So you might reach 250 people, but those 250 people each see it or two times so that counts as 500 impressions or maybe they share it and so that it counts towards the region impressions that kind of stuff should i have a posting strategy yes so yeah absolutely all right let's let's use this show for example all right all right michael you paying attention? I'm paying attention okay <laughs> tommy you paying attention yes, sir. okay here's the strategy we're going to use for this sh for this show okay tell us let's do it Oh, what? you want me to come up with a strategy yeah, on the spot strategy. for this show? Okay, so because everybody so. <laughs> who's watching, they want to do their own show. They might have an ad. They might have a message. So what's the strategy for this particular show? So I'm going to give you guys a lot of credit, first of all, because you run the live feeds from the community newspaper page, and then you'll hold the watch party on your personal profile, right? Grant Miller, Mike Miller, whoever else is having their their watch parties. So that's one piece of the strategy. It's not just to post it on my page and go live as my brand, but then also host watch parties so other people can see it there as well. If you wanted to take it up a notch, I know you guys are doing really doing a lot of these a day and it's it's awesome, but if you wanted to get really specific, you could say, hey, you know, tune in, you can release a schedule. Okay, at oh, yeah, this that's, time. That's a great We're having point. people at this time. I think we don't, we tried to do it, but uh -huh. we got so many shows. Right. And people and sometimes people cancel mm -hmm. you know but t explain that how to promote it right so I mean, that, I mean that's something that i would do is just probably post a schedule okay maybe, so next um, week next week when you come on right you're gonna you're gonna put in something together and post it 
Well, yeah. I mean, well, we posted on Miss Inc., by the way. So if you were to go to the Miss Inc. Oh, page, yeah, okay. last week, it's, I think it was on Friday that we posted, hey, Misty is going to be back on community newspapers on Monday at noon. So um, we do that as well. So that's another tip, too. So if you're a business owner professional coming on this show or another show or just doing anything in the community where people can be a part of it, it's great to post those ahead of time. We have clients that are on different TV segments and we have that schedule ahead of time. So we'll tell people, hey, look out for so-and-so on this day and time on this channel. They're going to be talking about X, Y, Z. Well, I one, I one thing I like is when you promote it early, it tells your viewers mm -hmm. or your friends or fans that, that you're trying to market. Right. People want to know. They want to do business with winners. So yes. if you're out there marketing your thing, doesn't matter. People get all hung up on how many views you have mm -hmm. or how many engagements. Doesn't matter how many. It matters the results. Did mm -hmm. you get what you wanted? Right. Okay. And are you getting uh, results? Now, for you, what you're doing here, you're educating the public. Correct. Everybody who has nope. Facebook thinks they know how to run Facebook. Yes. Well. You know, my, my 12 year old niece knows more than most of us. Because it's, it's, it's typical. It, it's changing so quickly. Correct? Yes. All so the time. It, you always got to be pushing. Okay. Would you recommend answering to customers via Facebook message or refer them directly to your business contact? Ah, so actually, I'm going to add another option to that. So let's say that somebody has a question for you. And I think I'm actually I'm going to use the example of let's say it's a negative comment or a negative review, right? Because that's what people freaked out the most about. Oh, brutal. <laughs> Brutal. brutal brutal right i mean i get emails and text messages from my brother that shows bad, <laughs> this shows bad. you know he, he, i the don't get any critic. compliments you know the yes hashtag critic. we're gonna talk about hashtags but go ahead oh, hashtags. Is... all right so let's use that as a common example because that's a question a lot of people have so let's say that somebody comes and they have a negative review or a negative comment so i think step one is people you know freak out oh my god that's not the story that's not what really happened or whatever it is and that's fine so i think really the key is to use that as a customer service experience so what i mean by that is publicly reply to the comment or reply to the review and say whatever it is that you feel that you need to say i always like to address the situation acknowledge their feelings and invite them to contact me off-site personally and then if they're going on and on about it you can then decide okay maybe this is better to take to a private forum so again whether you say hey you know i want to reach out to you directly what's your phone number what's your email address or let's connect in the direct messaging part of facebook that's another way to do it where you take that conversation offline because i don't know that you necessarily want to have the entire conversation publicly if you don't have to but what that does is yes there's a poor review there but i think people are understanding and they know that you know not everybody's always going to be happy and sometimes things happen but when they see that you respond so in that public place and they see that you respond it shows hey they're paying attention and they care Right. So that's essentially, you know, how. it's interesting because when we have comments, I tell people to call me mm -hmm. because when you're texting or emailing, something's going to go wrong. There's so much that gets lost in translation. Right. Yes. Because, you know, especially on my phone, you mm -hmm. text a message, gets so screwed up. So I, if there's a problem, I say, please call me. Mm -hmm. And usually they don't call. And if they right. do, they feel better that you reached out. Right. And, and, you know, we have people. Most people don't compliment. They usually complain. Mm -hmm. But when you're giving out your phone number, like right now, if you go on our web page, our mobile phone numbers are on there. Mm -hmm. Most people, out of respect, don't call at 3 o'clock in the morning. But, you know, some of us, some do. Right. So, Michael, he, if somebody emails Michael at <laughs> 2 o'clock in the morning, he's responding. Okay. <laughs> Hashtags. Are they necessary for Facebook? I don't think so. I think unless you're doing a specific campaign on Facebook, which can happen, um, I don't think people really use hashtags on Facebook like they do on Instagram or Twitter. So I don't know that it really will widen your reach a lot. I certainly wouldn't put the amount that you might put on an Instagram post and um, Twitter strategies have changed. So we'll talk about each of those networks at another time. But um, I don't think that they, they really do a whole lot. Regarding, should you hire somebody to run your Facebook? That's what you do. That is what we do. That's what your company does. But everybody thinks they know how to do it. Mm -hmm. And then when you get to it, you go, oh, my God, all that energy. It's a lot. It's it's I think it's a lot more time intensive than people realize. So well, if, you if you want have, to be good at it, if you want to be good at it. Right. And so kind of like we talked about a couple of weeks ago, you know, don't want to just set up a page. OK, great. I have a Facebook page and then just let it die. Right. Well, A lot of people have that on LinkedIn. 
or mm. you Google their name. Oh, it's not working. Or I didn't. Or I opened two Facebooks. Right. And you can't close your old ones. So you have, you know, there's not Grant Miller, but there could be three Grant Millers. Mm -hmm. You forget. So um, when somebody hires you to right. do Facebook, whether it's you or somebody else, what's the first things you tell them? The first things that I tell them. Well, first things that we want to do is I really I like to have an in-depth conversation because for me over at, at, at my business, one of the things that, you know, I really like to say that we're a boutique agency and hold on to that because my goal is for my clients to feel like we're a part of their team. So I may not be in your office and I may not be technically, quote unquote, an employee, but I want you to feel as if we are a part of your team. And the reason that is, is because in order for me to do my job, to represent your brand and your company on Facebook or anywhere else on social media or in the digital space, I have to really understand it. So I'll spend time getting to know your company. I'll ask you questions like, what's the number one thing that you want people to know about you when they go to your social media pages? Um, how do you want them to feel? Those, those kinds of things, like what kind of tone do you want to have? Is there specific products? Talk to me about your audience. What problems are you solving yeah, for who, them? Who are your All clients? those, yes. Who, who, and everybody says, let's just use restaurants, for example. I want anybody. Well, how far do people come mm -hmm. to your restaurant? Two miles, three miles. Right. That breaks it down, mm -hmm. right? I think that any kind of business, you need to know where your clients are coming from and concentrate. Mm -hmm. where, do, where do you open another restaurant? Next to another restaurant. Right. People go, of course, because it get, becomes a point of uh, an area to go. Example, like Core Gables. Mm -hmm. You, you want to pick a restaurant? You go to XYZ if it's full, you go to the next one. Right, you just get on Miracle Mile and keep walking. Cor right? Exactly. <laughs> or now Coconut Grove has a few restaurants in so, uh, South Miami. So you need a, a point of interest. So on Facebook, now we don't do it. Maybe we should. Uh, I'll check to, with Michael in a minute. Okay. Should we have our web page on there more often? Like right now, we don't have our web page. Should we put on our on our Facebook our web page? Say hey for more in information. You can. I mean, but if you're gonna do that, I would make sure that the page that you're sen sending them to is really clear. So we might call that a landing page. Uh, so okay, let's say right. if you're saying you want to apply to be a part of one of these live segments, send them to a page on your website with a form just about these live segments. In other words, because you want to make it as um, personal to the individual as as possible. Gotcha. Okay. Sh how often should I interact with my Facebook audience? Every day. If <laughs> every day. I mean, really be paying attention to that when people post. You th there. And even if so, some people think like, okay, someone's replying to something negative. Now I have to respond quickly. But we sort of sometimes will forget about responding to the people that are giving you a compliment. And I think either way, people are using their energy to interact with you. And it's and there's a purpose behind that. And so they want to be acknowledged. And I think that anytime that someone posts something, hey, you know what? Thank you so much for taking the time to do that. I mean, even if it's my birthday and people are When's your birthday? The, in March, we missed it. <laughs> yeah. We're both wow. coming back around. March what? Tenth. <laughs> okay, we're gonna. Hey, <laughs> Tommy, we're gonna do a happy birthday for her. Don't you think so? Think. Okay, we're gonna change your birthday. We're oh, gonna make. We're gonna what's today? My birthday. What's today's date? Twenty fourth. Oh, August okay. 24th. Later today, we're gonna have our happy birthday. August twenty fourth is your new. Your That's new birthday. my new birthday. Yeah. Uh, would that make me a Leo? I don't even know. Okay. <laughs> how how often? Uh, how do I know which which post to boost for ads? to boost for ads. Yeah. So I think again, it's something that um, I wouldn't just go throwing money around, but if there's something that you really want somebody to see, so maybe you have an event coming up that you're trying to build attendance for, you might want to boost that post as an example, or a sale, something like that. Uh, you're involved with a business association, am I correct? I am. <laughs> Before we finish up, okay, let's finish on this. What advice would you give somebody to solely rely on Facebook to promote their business. To solely rely on yeah, Facebook? Yeah, what advice would you give them? That's you, only would, relying on Facebook, right? Yeah. So I would say- I think say, it's dangerous. I think, I think you never wanna put your eggs in one basket in marketing period, and that includes only social media. So somebody might come to me, you know, I've had that where people come to me and they're like, okay, so I'm doing 
this is my entire marketing budget and I'm giving it to you to only do social media. And I'm like, well, there's other ways that people are looking for you, whether that's email, whether people are still checking the mail. Uh, maybe there's other places that you want to place advertisements like in community <laughs> newspapers. You know, there's a whole diversified place where people might see you and they say that it takes seven touches on average. So seven times of people seeing your content before they remember it or want to do business with you. Right. So. I think it's it I do agree that it's dangerous to put everything in in one basket but I also want to not freak everybody out and say oh my god I have to do everything where do I start I really say and how much do I have to spend right so what I think the thing to do is is to figure out where your audience is so again one tip I think I gave this last time I was here send text message people in your in your audience and just say hey like where do you spend the most time um, online or on your phone or wherever it is find out what social networks they're on for example and then pick a couple of those and really focus on them get really good at them and then you can expand i don't think i think people get overwhelmed by trying to do everything like oh my god now there's TikTok, and i have to be on TikTok. i don't necessarily think that's true well you know we we feel because we eat a lot we it's like a pizza mm -hmm. there's a lot of slices and you gotta we believe that you gotta do a lot of the slices to make it work exactly you know so before march years ago it used to be in the 30s when radio came around, they said newspapers are dying. Mm -hmm. Then television came later in, the, in like the 20s and 30s after newspapers are dying. Right. And then internet came around in the 80s. Newspapers are dying. Well, the truth be told, television has died. Right. Because now they're just one of 200 stations. Right. Well, now you have what? You have Netflix, you have all these different things right. coming up too. Hey, right. You know, I, I, or you can watch all your movies and then the local stations who watches that anymore mm -hmm. and let's just say in miami there's two million adults okay and there's six or seven major stations mm -hmm. and then every cable station and every it's down to such a small slice so right. they kept blasting the newspapers but every small town in the united states has a newspaper Mm -hmm. The dealers are getting beaten up because they don't know who they are. Do you cover local news or do you cover national news? Mm -hmm. So, but when everybody says newspapers are dying, our papers got stronger. But we go, the first thing somebody goes to us and go, we don't buy print. We buy social media. Mm -hmm. So now our social media is stronger than anybody. And they go, well, we want this instead of that. Uh -huh. So not, it, it, it's very tough to tell people what to do and how to do it because there's no money if they don't have money. But, you know, social media is just par part of the pie. It's part of the pie, right. Right, and, and you have to that. be in, and before March, it was networking, being out and meeting people mm -hmm. all the time. So speaking about that, let's talk about your association. You belong yeah. to one or two um, or three? A couple, actually, Pinecrest Business Association and also Chamber South. So what are they doing now different? And by the way, when this, virus ends in two years yeah. according to world health a year and a half to two years both these organizations had adapted and improvised completely mm -hmm. yes you know so what were they and what are they looking like let's just use pinecrest because you're yes. involved with that yes network. pinecrest i'm more familiar with um but i would say the the difference being and i'm not on the board by the way but we do work with them on their social media um one thing that we've done is the virtual event and trying, and I think a lot of people, right? So everyone, oh, we all switched to Zoom and we're trying to figure out these different offerings. So they've done a couple things that are a little bit different. They did a wine tasting networking where they partnered with Milam's and we got- How did you do? Everybody had a bottle of wine at the yeah. house? Yeah, yeah. So Milam's put together this awesome package, basically like almost at cost of these like four wine bottles. So they did this wine tasting um, on virtual. So that Everybody was Everybody at cool. home had their own bottle. Yeah. Was it hilarious? Well, actually, I wasn't on that one, but oh. I heard it was a lot of fun, and it, and it went. People really enjoyed it. And then um, I think it was like four bottles of wine. I think they tasted, so it was really a nice time for everybody. And that, from what I heard, again, I wasn't there. And the other thing that we they did recently, which is so every year they do a candidate. Did forum. they do Zoom or Facebook Live? They did Zoom. They did Zoom. They and did they, Zoom. Didn't, they didn't post it on their web. So we have the well. 
depends on what it is. So like, for instance, the candidates forum, I was just going to give as an example, that's always been a pretty popular event where we invite local candidates to come in and give a two minute spiel about um, their their spot that they're running for. Um, and we, so we did that virtually over Zoom. It was um, overseen by Mitch Panther over at Panther Panther in San Pedro. So shout out to Mitch and um, and Brett, too. Yeah, and Brett too. And David. Brett, Brett and David. <laughs> All of them. They're, yes. they're, they're awesome. So um, so anyway, so we had that and then but that was like a like an hour and a half thing. So it was harder to take that video and, and take it and right. download it and do whatever. Although I do believe I haven't done it yet, but I do believe you can do a Facebook run a Facebook live from a Zoom. There's a way to make them talk and connect. I yes. think Is that um, correct, I Michael? have not done it yet. I was but. Ask her. <laughs> I think so. I want to say yes, but I don't know if it takes we an tried extra it, app. We? I haven't done it. So I, I have a question for you. Oh, now I'm in trouble. So a question. We have one gentleman that wants to join us from his house. Okay. And then another gentleman that wants to join us here on Facebook Live. Uh huh. So the question is, how do we connect that Zoom, or do we have to wind up doing all three of us on Zoom? Probably all three on Zoom. I think that's going to be your easiest bet okay. than trying to. Can, uh, yeah, I mean, you could. I think you could invite somebody into your live, but um, for simplicity's sake, yeah. probably yeah. everybody. Simple <laughs> <Very> simple. <laughs> That's what I Thank would you. say. Okay, so talk about Chamber South a little bit. So Chamber South, yeah, Chamber is run by the executive director over there is Brittany Bassant, who is actually a really good friend of mine. We're both on the in Wild Bunch, which is the young professional group Wild over at Bunch? Zoo Miami. Yeah, it's Zoo Miami Foundations oh, Young Professional okay. Group. And it's called Wild Bunch. It's awesome. We have a lot of fun. So, um, so Trump, she runs it, and they do a lot of really fun events. And they um, they really step up. They get community leaders uh, constantly doing different workshops. Again, everything is through Zoom still, but um, they 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 do a really nice job. And they also are really supportive of their members as well. Just like Pinecrest, they're very supportive of their members. Okay, so next week, what are we talking about? Ooh, why don't you guys tell us if anybody has any suggestions? Do you have any ideas? Oh, who's watching you? You want to get, you get yeah, your Yeah, let's check. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Did you get it working? Mine's yeah, working on my computer, not here. Let's see who is watching. Well, she's looking. It's, she's looking at her watch party who is watching. Every week, Misty's going to come on and talk about different types of marketing, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, correct? Yeah. You Twitter. got some people there? We got a few people. You want to recognize them? Let's do oh, Jenny Melnick, Davenport. Now she's Davenport, but okay. she has been for many years. But I've known her from the Sunnyland days. Remember we talked about but Sunnyland. She used to be a cheerleader. Yes, I was a cheerleader and a cheerleading coach. Very interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Those were good times. Um, and I have Daniel and Keith. I don't know who he is, but we are public. So say hello and that's my list right now. That's who's right, watching yeah, at the moment. Here. I can't see it. Oh, Anna Maria, hi. How are you? She's so sweet. Okay, go ahead, Michael. Okay, so we have Vivian Pina, David Singer, that's Councilman Singer, Palmetto the Bay, Ann King Truesdale, Eduardo Bilbos, Marvin Stein, Anna Martin, Sonia Karachi, Righteousness Patriotism. That's her name. Okay. Sure. Anna, Anna, uh, Anna Martin, uh, and that's it. All right, we had oh, a few people watch. We, we appreciate it. People. Next week, we'll talk about different social media. As always, Misty is the best. He did <laughs> a great you. job. Remember, we're here to help you guys understand Facebook a little bit more and how to market. If you have any questions, you can reach out, Miss Inc. And uh, everybody have a great day. Thank you, guys. I appreciate everyone. Remember, stay safe, cool. stay healthy. We'll see you next week. Thanks for tuning in. You got it.